What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we are here with what is probably the coolest EV on sale right now. At least I think so because this is the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. It is the crossover slash station wagon version of the Taycan and it is absolutely awesome. I love it to bits. I love the fact that Porsche decided to make this to give it this adventurous edge and uh, this off-roady edge and just made it even cooler than it already was. So today I'm going to show you around it. We're going to talk a little bit about the spec we've got it in and about the stuff that sets the Cross Turismo apart from the regular Taycan. Uh, after that, we're going to take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn blast. All right, let's start with the spec because we've got an ice gray car today, I believe. I don't have a spec sheet, but I just checked the website and this looks like ice gray. A really cool color, I think. It's, it's like silver, but with a, a little bit of a blue in there. And uh, I kind of like it because you have all these black parts for the Cross Turismo. Uh, yeah, I kind of like that contrast. At the front, we've got a little front bumper here with like this off-roady bit. Uh, this car actually has the off-road design pack, which means you get some cool stuff on the outside and on the inside that sets your Cross Turismo apart and gives it that really cool off-roady look. So this is part of that. Love that, love the front of the Taycan. Uh, love the headlights, nice and aggressive. Uh, the wheels, these are kind of a, well, I would say an off-road design as well. It kind of looks, you know, it looks nice and chunky and it looks like it can take a beating. These are 20 inch and we've got Pilot Sport 4 tires wrapped around that with Porsche, regular Porsche steel brakes. Carbon ceramics are only for the Turbo S, I believe, or the Turbo and the Turbo S. Uh, charge port, of course, you guys have seen this before. Swipey, swipey, and the little door disappears, like magic, <laughs> magic. Uh, this is part of the off-road pack as well. These little fins down the side with that little part here on the lower part of the side skirt is in that same color as the front bumper. This is Vesuvius gray. You can also get this in high gloss black, I think. So I actually like this. I think this gives it a nice off-roady look. Uh, more here, this little fin right there. It is to protect from stones, of course, this as well. So if you go off-roading in this or off-roading, uh, take a gravel road, you don't hit this stuff, the paint with the stones. Same goes for this part right there. Uh, and we've got a little bumper extension down here as well in that gray. But of course, this is what it's all about. This and this. So the ground clearance on one of these Cross Turismos is two centimeters higher than on a regular Taycan. If you have the off-road design pack, that adds another centimeter. So this is uh, three centimeters higher than a regular one. If you don't have the off-road design pack, uh, you still get that extra centimeter, but only if you hit gravel mode on the inside. Uh, so that's basically how it's divided. And of course, this is another big part. Uh, these roof rails are super awesome. And you've got this station wagon rear end. Now, I think this looks absolutely awesome. I, I love it so much. I think it's even cooler than a Panamera Sport Turismo. I just... I love the fact that they did this, that they thought, yeah, this is a good idea for the Taycan. Okay, so let's get in the rear. Because this is actually a big improvement for the Taycan. You've got loads more headroom, of course, because in the regular Taycan, you have that sloping roof line. Uh, very pretty, of course, but this is much more practical. So it's like 36 millimeters higher, I think, uh, which gives you a lot more headroom and of course, Having this panoramic roof really helps. Gives it a nice spacious feel back here. It's actually not bad. It's not that big of a car, but actually quite spacious back there. Uh, of course, we've got the badge right here. You can have that removed as well, but we got a, I don't know if I actually mentioned that already. Uh, we've got a Taycan 4S, Cross Turismo, and boot space. Now, 
Uh, there's a lot of crap in here, but um, this of course is better than in the Taycan, but it's not that much better. It's not as much as you would expect, 42 liters. It is, however, a much more practical space. So it should be a lot more usable, this storage uh, space, compared to the regular Taycan. But man, I absolutely love it. This black roof spoiler as well. And you can honestly see that it sits so much higher than the regular one. Now, let me, if I select Sport Plus, I should be able to show you guys how it sits on the lower settings. Sport Plus. Is that going down? Yeah, it is, okay. Okay, so this would be the lowest ride height, I believe. And uh, I actually prefer it in the normal mode because I just think it looks so much cooler. High, high up. There it goes again. Yeah, absolutely love that. Super awesome. Um, let's check out the frunk as well. Although it's the same, of course, as with the regular Taycan. Little frunk and a place to fill your wiper fluid, stuff like that. Not that interesting. Let's check out the interior. Now, if you haven't seen my review of the regular uh, Taycan, the Turbo S, you can click in the top right corner because that's the review where I go in depth uh, about the Taycan in general, about the technology, about the development, about stuff like that. Um, if you have seen the review, you know I'm not the biggest fan of this. This is not great, this is great, this is great. And, hella freaking Luya, we found it. I talked about this in the Taycan RWD rear wheel drive review that I found out there was an option on the Taycan, the passenger display. Well, we have it now. And you have this cockpit. <laughs> what the hell? That is, I, I have to say, I thought it was the most useless option ever. Um, and I still think so. But it does look cool and it is a nice screen. So you can get this like driving info here or your passenger can handle the, the, the songs for the road trip or navigation, stuff like that. But if you are set alone here, this screen doesn't work. It just says Taycan on there. Um, but if someone's sitting here, they can operate the, uh, the, the passenger display, of course. But I don't know, I think it's still useless, but I, I kind of like it. <laughs> I kind of like the uselessness. Anyway, seats, really cool, very good, very supportive. And they have this headrest extender. And that extends quite a bit, it, it is tough to do, but that means that the seating position is really nice and comfy because you can rest your head. That's why they call it a headrest. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, um, other than that, interior wise, I've said this before, I love it in a regular Taycan or in this 4S. Turbo S, if you're paying 200 grand for this car, I would say that the interior is a bit, well, underwhelming. So I do think it's a good interior, but not for 200 grand. But I guess this is okay since this is quite a bit cheaper. Um, the 4S has a 93.4 kilowatt hour battery, range between 380 and 450 kilometers. It's difficult to say how much it really is. Uh, I mean, it depends on your driving style and your needs and stuff, but it's not bad. It, it's, uh, it's quite a good range, I would say. Charging, uh, 270 kilowatt hours, and the Cross Turismo, as standard, gets the Performance Battery Plus. So that's an option. I think it's like 7,000 euros uh, in the Netherlands. On the regular Taycan, on the Cross Turismo, you get it as standard because of the higher weight. So this car is 25 kilos heavier than the regular Taycan, which is not bad actually. And that is weight 
the, the Sport Turismo with the Performance Battery Plus, because it, it always has that, compared to the Taycan Performance Battery Plus, the 4S. So 25 kilos for that much more space. I would say that's a no-brainer because such it's a lot more car. Okay, so that's all that stuff out of the way. Oh, that's turning it off. Nice going, buddy. Turn it on. Go to drive. And we're going to take it for a drive. Now, let's start in normal. And we'll do a little bit and then we'll go to Sport Plus. You can see now it just says Taycan there. So uh, you can't operate it unless there's someone sitting in the passenger seat. Okay, now, as I've said before in the Taycan, the most incredible part, apart from the drivetrain, which is amazing, is the air suspension. This car is, I mean, honestly, this is Bentley level comfort. It's just so quiet. The air suspension, three chamber, is so good. I mean, it is really impressive. That strikes me most every time I drive this car is, is just the, the amount of comfort you get in here. And this Cross Turismo is even more comfortable than the regular Taycan because it sits a little bit higher up. So yeah, that is just incredible. It's honestly Bentley level, which is pretty impressive for a car, you know, this small. And I mean, it's not really meant for that, but still it does that. It's really cool. Okay, now let's go to Sport Plus, which activates the fake sound. It lowers the air suspension by three millimeters. And I forgot a very important part. We've got a compass right there because we have the off-road design pack. So instead of this clock stopwatch thing you get uh, with the Sports Chrono Pack, which this car also has because we have Sport Plus and launch control, this compass, I really like that. Okay, launch control, foot on the brake, full throttle. We're going to disengage, traction control. Okay, full throttle. Ah, that is very nice, that is very nice. So the 4S Cross Turismo does zero to 104.1 seconds. The regular Taycan 4S does that in 4.0, 4 seconds dead. But I've been able to do a 4.04, .04, so that's basically 4 seconds dead. Pretty freaking impressive. So it has 571 horsepower because it automatically gets that performance battery plus. And that means that it is actually quite quick. It's not super insane, you know, bend your neck, turbo S quick, but it is quick enough. Little sound. Not that loud, obviously. But you know, handling, it, it, it really drives like a Porsche. It, it is so impressive. And you do feel like there's a little bit more movement in the body compared to a regular Taycan. And that's just that ride height, I think. And I, I think the suspension might be a little bit softer as well compared to a regular one. But I like that. I think this is actually the better car. This is the better approach to this car in my opinion at least for well practically for all of them but i guess if you have a turbo s you want the lightest one and the most aerodynamically efficient one so i guess you could go for the regular one but i really like the cross turismo i like the approach i like the fact that porsche also offers like a, a bike rack for this car uh, they offer a roof box with like a color coded part on there it, it just it just makes sense and i like that porsche really fought that through and went all the way with that sort of adventurous lifestyle-y approach to this car okay Autobahn. 
slow down a little bit no one behind me we're going to do this from 50 full throttle oh. now this car only delivers that 571 horsepower on overboost and the overboost is only active when you use launch control so if you do a regular pull like this from 50 you don't have that full power but still top speed is 240 kilometers an hour uh, I just did 245 GPS so that is all good 0 to 100 performs really well 100 to 200 Porsche says it should do 8.9 I've been able to do an 8.74 I mean it just performs really well as advertised I would say now of course at these speeds your range is going to die quickly but it's incredible to feel how good this car actually is so at high speeds if I hit that suspension button the air suspension stays at the lower version at the lower setting for aerodynamic efficiency but I do get the softer dampers absolutely amazing it's so comfy and again as with the Panamera Sport Turismo I just think that this extra version is is the way to go it's just cool it's cooler than the regular one and it looks awesome it's only 25 kilos heavier the range is pretty much the same the performance is pretty much the same I mean it's a no-brainer for me absolutely love it so we'll do a little, little pull with we've got the suspension in soft now you can feel the car dipping a bit more and if we floor it you can feel the car the front raising a little bit oh but that's so soft over those bumps <laughs> Oh, that's really impressive. Oh, it actually did raise a bit, the uh, air suspension. So, nice indicating there. Already left the highway. So, the really good thing about this EV is it feels like a Porsche. It really does. It just feels like a regular Porsche. And the fact that they've been able to convey that feeling, that really sturdy, solid feel is, is really impressive. We've still got that 800 volt system. So that means that we can do these high speed runs, these 100 to 200 kilometer an hour runs as long as we want. Uh, it, it will perform much better. It will not overheat as much as other EVs <laughs> Tesla and it just works it works everywhere anytime and I think the fact that that's now possible to say about this EV is a really big step but I've talked about that before in my other reviews we're back at the gas station going to end it here hope you enjoyed it you can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle if you want to see more videos like this you can also check out this video or go check out this playlist see you the next one guys bye